everyone, Gecko here. I've got something amazing to show you today. Cranes! Whoa! They're brilliant at taking things way up high into the sky. If you've ever seen a tall building being built, then you might have seen a crane. They're not very good at hiding. They can almost reach the clouds. And they're able to lift heavy objects onto the tops of buildings. Cranes are so cool! This is a 250 ton mobile crane. It's massive! And do you see the long arm that's sticking up into the air? Well, that's called the boom. There's lots of different types of cranes, but let's see what makes this one special. Whoa! This yellow crane's got loads of wheels. Maybe as many as Larry the lorry. This means it can drive down the road to all sorts of construction sites. They're places where buildings are built. But I wonder, how does it go under bridges with that really tall boom on top? it blue. You fold it away. This is Ian and he's the operator of this crane. The crane can move up and down, and left and right and it's all controlled from something called a cab. That's where Ian sits. He can use both of these joysticks to control the boom and the hook it has on the end. That looks like a fun job. Can you see what he's doing? By pulling the joystick in his left hand backwards, the boom is shrinking. Wowzers! The boom's made up of seven separate pieces, which all fit neatly inside each other. A bit like a Russian doll. Look at that! The boom is all packed up. These are called the outriggers. Just like stabilizers on your bike, they stop the crane from falling over when the boom is up. To get the crane ready for driving, we need to fold the outriggers away. Ian uses this control panel to fold them up, making them disappear inside the side of the truck. Bye-bye, outriggers. The outriggers were sitting on special mats, which stopped the super heavy crane from cracking the floor underneath. Ian neatly packs them away at the back of the truck. Wow, that's brilliant! Now Ian can jump in the front cab and press one final button to balance the truck. Ready for driving! Can you see it wobble? Look, it's rising up! And now it's ready to drive! Off we go! Ian's had the call! And we're now on our way to a construction site to help the builders. Down on the construction site, they're building everywhere. But when the building gets too high, they all take extra care. Here to save the day is the massive yellow crane. It's time for the boom and hook to come and take the strain. Lift it high, lift it high, lift it high. Thanks 
very much to Ian and all the team here at John Such Cranes. It's Cheerio from Gecko. Bye! Hello everyone, Gecko here. Guess what? I've got a fun day ahead for us and it's all to do with trucks. Have you ever wondered how all those roads and pavements and even the school playground gets made? Me too! After all, we stand on it, play games on it, and I've even scraped my knees on it. Ouch, did that hurt. But how does it all get there? Well, today we're going to find out a little bit more about that. And it all starts with trucks. So I'm here at the Tarmac Quarry to meet some of those very special trucks today. And not just any old truck, oh no! Tipping and non-tipping trucks. But what is a tipping and non-tipping truck anyway? Let's go and find out together why these trucks are so amazing at tipping and travelling and pushing and paving. Look, here comes a tipping truck right now. Can you see it? Wowzers! Look how big it is up close! There are lots of different sized tipping and non-tipping trucks. Look, there's three different sizes here. And because of that, they all have different amounts of wheels. There's loads of wheels on this truck. How many wheels can you see? Now we're ready to go into the quarry and see these tipping trucks in action. But what is a quarry? Well, a quarry is like a really big hole in the ground. And in this quarry, they have lots of special materials that can be used to help make things. How cool is that? So here we are at the quarry where a digger's waiting to drop stone into the back of it. Stone can be heated up and added to a glue type material called bitumen to make asphalt. The digger scoops from this huge pile of stone and then pours it into the back of the truck where there's plenty of space. Once the truck is full, it's time to transport the stone to another part of the quarry. The stones can be used in concrete for buildings or as asphalt for roads. Now, here comes my favourite part. Tipping! Yay! Here we go! The truck reverses into position. Then the driver presses a button which makes the roof of the trailer open up. Now the trailer slowly starts to tip upright and wow, look at that. It's made a huge mess on the ground. Hey gang, remember the 16 wheeler from before? Well guess what, even that tips. The tipper body is nearly 11 metres long. And look how high it goes. I bet that's taller than a giraffe. Now that the stone has been dropped off, a digger comes along to clean up and push the material into a nice neat pile out of the way of moving trucks. Bet Danny the digger would love to meet him. Now, here's a secret for you. See that truck there? Well, and this is just for us to know. That truck isn't a tipping truck at all. Honest, it's actually a non-tipping truck. Isn't that amazing? Now, I bet you're thinking, no, Gecko, those trucks look just the same. Well, here's why they aren't. See, instead of raising the tipper body into the air, this truck has a moving floor. I know, a moving floor. 
How fun is that? That then pushes the material out of the truck. Non-tipping trucks are used when there might be height limits in the area. Tipping and non-tipping trucks not only transport materials to different places of the quarry, but also onto roads and other sites. Before they do, the truck has to be weighed. Do you know why? I'll tell you. It's so that the truck is safe to drive on public roads. Just like the roads your mum and dad drive you to school on. So, the truck parks up under these scales and the driver presses this button to calculate how much material he's got in the back. Phew! It looks like we're a safe weight and now we're ready to hit the roads. Come on everyone, let's follow him and see where he goes. These workmen are working through the night to pave new roads. And this non-tipping truck has come along to give them the materials they need. The truck backs up onto this paver and pushes asphalt into it, which is the crushed stone from earlier, all heated up. The paver then flattens this onto the ground and a road roller comes along to smooth it into a road. Hmm. Now I don't know about you, but I need to see all that again. So, the asphalt is transported to the paver. Whoa! The paver flattens and presses this onto the ground. Double whoa! The road roller smooths it out even further. And then look at that. Now we have a road. That's amazing. Wait a second. Is that... Yes, it's a tipping truck. It's here to help out. And there we have it. A nice new paved road. Well, I don't know about you, but I've had a great time at the tarmac quarry today. We got to learn all about tipping and non-tipping trucks and even saw them paving roads. Now, when you play in the playground, you can tell everyone all about the trucks that help make the floor. I'm off now to tell my vehicle friends all about this. Until next time everyone, it's Cheerio from Gecko. Bye! Hello everyone! Gecko here! And I'm so bonkers excited! Why? Because today I'm learning all about fire trucks at this amazing fire station. How cool is that? Fire trucks are used all over the world to help firefighters put out fires and rescue people who are trapped in hard to reach places. We're going to meet two different fire trucks today and we get to meet the brilliant crew members of Lim Fire Station. These amazing fire trucks and firefighters are experts at, you guessed it, putting out fires. They use these super long wiggly hoses, a bit like what we see in the garden, but super powerful. And look, they even have special masks that protect them from the heat. This is Jay, and he's the watch manager, which is what they call the leader of the team. Firefighter Hill, door number four. Also, I'd like to welcome uh, Gecko, uh, who's going to learn to be a firefighter for the day. Thanks for having me, White Watch. Well, look who's here. Blue and Green Mechanical have come to learn about fire trucks too. Make sure you two stay out of trouble, please. This is Laura and Ellen. They're both firefighters in White Watch. What are you doing now, Laura? 
While Gecko, we're getting ready for the starter shift. This involves getting all our kit out so that we're ready for any emergency that we might come across. So as you can see, Ellen's put her boots out ready. She's also got both the jackets, a helmet and the gloves. So she's ready for any emergency we might come across. Speed is always of the essence, so it's important that it's all laid out properly. Everyone, meet Andy. He's the driver of the fire truck. He's making sure everything is okay for the next emergency call out. But what is an emergency call out? Well, that's when people ring up and tell the firefighters they need help. And remember, it's very important to check that the truck's lights are working properly. They need to flash really brightly when the truck leaves the station to let people know help is coming. I love this fire truck. Do you know why? It's because there's so many secret places to store the amazing life-saving equipment. Look, Ellen and Laura are checking the hydraulic cutting equipment. These are like a big pair of scissors. But instead of cutting through paper, they cut through metal. Now mechanicals are going to have to stop messing around. This isn't a place for messing around, guys. We don't want to end up rescuing you, do we? Once Andy and the guests have checked that the truck is OK, Laura and Ellen need to make sure their breathing apparatus works safely. This is what they use when it gets really smoky inside a building that's on fire. It's very important that they can breathe clean air. Psst! Guess what, everybody? There's actually more than one fire truck in this fire station. This one here is called the ALP, which stands for Aerial Ladder Platform. Should we all say it together? Aerial Ladder Platform. Now the team use this ALP truck when they need to rescue people from places that are just way too high for the ladder. Wowzers! It sounds like someone's in trouble. Come on, Gecko, get your gear on. We've got a job. That's one of those emergency calls that we talked about a minute ago. Remember? All of the important stuff we need to know about the rescue comes through on this piece of paper. OK, all three appliances, mechanicals stuck at height in limb. Oh no, it sounds like the mechanicals are in trouble. We'd better go and rescue them. Now that we've got our kit on, it's time to move out. Oh dear, it looks like those silly mechanicals are stuck at the top of that tower and can't get down. We'll have to use the ladder to go all the way up there and get them. Look at this amazing teamwork. The crew all work together to get this ladder up as quickly and as safely as possible.
Oh dear. It looks like the ladder isn't quite high enough to reach the mechanicals. Hmm. Now, what can we use instead? That's right. Bring in the help. To make sure the Alp doesn't wobble, Andy and James use these controls to move these things called jacks out of the side of the truck. They look like metal legs and they stick out and lift the truck off the ground. Wow! That's really heavy, but these jacks are so strong, they stop the Alp from falling over. Whoa, look at that! It's got super strength, like super mechanical. Once the Alp is stable, which means it won't wobble, Andy jumps into the operating seat. That's the one that works the machinery. James is so brave. Look, he's going up in the cage to rescue the mechanicals. Now, because he's going up very high, he clips himself on using this harness, so he can't fall off. A harness is a bit like a belt you wear around your trousers. When you fasten it, your trousers don't fall down. OK, here goes. Up, up. Up, up into the sky! James is now in control of the cage and he can move up, down, left and right with these joysticks. Almost there! Hold on mechanicals, we're coming to save you! Gotcha! Phew! I'm glad those mechanicals are safe. Thanks, James and Andy. OK, mechanicals, I hope you learnt your lesson there. We shouldn't be climbing up towers and being silly, because we've got other people to rescue, OK? I've loved spending time with the firefighters and the amazing fire trucks today. Let's say a big thank you to all the crew here at Lim Fire Station for teaching us all about their awesome trucks. Until next time everyone, it's Cheerio from Gecko. Bye! Hello everyone, Gecko here. I'm back at the Hoylake Lifeboat Station with the RNLI to learn all about their amazing hovercraft. I can't wait to meet the crew and get stuck in. A hovercraft is an amphibious vehicle. Do you know what amphibious means? It means something that can go on land and in the water. This is Chris, and he's today's Hovercraft Commander. Great to see you, Gecko. Come on into our lifeboat station. It's amazing inside this lifeboat station. There's so many huge vehicles that are all designed to rescue people who are in trouble at sea. Gecko, would you like to join us on a hovercraft training exercise? Oh, yes, please, Chris. To stay safe, warm and dry, the crew have to wear this safety gear. The helmet is actually called a gecko helmet. Can you believe it? It's a real team effort to launch the hovercraft. Push team! The hovercraft is very heavy so a big tractor is used to tow it safely down to the beach. Then, it 
it's all hands on deck to unclip the hovercraft from the trailer and pump up the inflatable sponsons which help the hovercraft float on water. Then the pilot uses the engine to glide back onto the beach. Hooray! Wow! Look at all of these levers and switches. It all looks very complicated. Nick is the pilot and it's his job to fly the hovercraft. To start the engine, Nick turns this key. We can't see them, but underneath the hovercraft are two fans, which blow air downwards. This fills the skirt with air, making the hovercraft lift off the ground. Wowzers trousers! The big fans at the back are called the thrust propellers, and these push the hovercraft forwards. When Nick moves this lever, the rudders at the back move. It's these rudders that steer the hovercraft left and right. Nick makes the fans move faster and the hovercraft glides forwards. Woo, that is amazing! As commander of the hovercraft, it's Chris's job to check all around and give Nick instructions to help him fly the hovercraft safely. It's so fast and it's so noisy. Now I know why these gecko helmets have microphones and headphones built into them. They allow us to talk and listen to each other. It feels like we're floating across the sand. And just like that, we're on the water. This hovercraft is amazing! It's now time for me to hop off and let the crew do their training exercise. The RNLI is a charity set up to save lives at sea. And these training exercises help the team here get ready for real life search and rescue missions. So to be as prepared as they possibly can be, the team practice, practice, practice. Today they're practicing how to rescue someone who is stuck in the mud. Playing in deep mud near the sea can be very dangerous especially if the tide is coming in. Now that's what I call getting stuck in. Tides are the rise and fall of the levels of the sea. This is something that's happening all of the time, which means that if you're stuck in the mud on the beach, the tide might come in and surround you with water. It's very important to respect the water and make sure you check when the tide is coming in to make sure you're safe when you're at the beach. Well done team, another successful training mission. Oh dear, it looks like the mechanicals haven't checked the tide times and they're stranded on this island. It looks like there's a storm coming too. Luckily, the hovercraft is the perfect rescue vehicle. Jump aboard, mechanicals! the hovercraft is. All that whizzing about in the sand and sea is dirty work. Every time the hovercraft is called into action, the RNLI crew take great care to make sure it's cleaned up and ready to be used again. 
Here in the nice dry lifeboat station is the perfect place for the hovercraft to sleep for the night. Thank you very much to the fabulous crew from RNLI Hoylake for allowing me to spend the day with them and their amazing hovercraft. It's been absolutely brilliant. I'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! Whoa! Look at this amazing red fire truck! This beautiful vehicle has everything that a fire truck should have. Lights, a siren, seats for the crew, a hose for putting out fires and a ladder. But this fire truck is hiding a very special secret. It's also an amazing pizza making truck with a wood fired oven inside. This is Ben. He bought this old fire truck and spent a long time transforming it into the amazing pizza making vehicle it is today. Hello Gecko. Hello Ben. We need to get some cheese for our pizzas. Do you fancy a ride in the fire engine? Yes, please. This fire truck is over 60 years old. Brave firefighters would drive in this special vehicle to go and put out fires. Things worked a little differently 60 years ago in fire trucks. Look, instead of pressing a button for the siren to make a noise, Ben has to wind this lever like this. Here we are at the cheese factory to pick up some special mozzarella cheese. Hi Ben. Hi Hi Gekka. Here's mozzarella. Fantastic, thank you very much. Right Gekko, let's go make some pizzas. There's lots of things that go into making the perfect pizza, but one of them is heat. A really hot oven is what's needed, and luckily, Ben has a special wood burning oven which uses real fire. Ben starts off with small sticks called kindling to get the fire started, before adding larger logs to make the fire bigger. Ben then safely pushes the burning logs to the back of the oven to make space for all those yummy pizzas to go in. Remember, fire is very hot and extremely dangerous, so only grown-ups should ever go near it. It takes a little while for the oven to get really hot, so Ben sets up the rest of the pizza stall. And here come some helpers to make lots of pizzas. Hi Gecko! Hello everyone, let's get pizza making. Pizzas were invented in Italy. And to make pizza dough, all you need is flour, water, yeast and salt. Ben's already got some dough that he made last night. And now he's busy stretching and shaping it into pizza bases. Once the pizza base is nice and thin, Ben adds some tasty red tomato sauce and the special mozzarella cheese. Then you can put whatever topping you like on your pizza. Yum! The wooden board that the pizza is sitting on is called a paddle and Ben can now move the pizza towards the scorching hot oven. Put it inside and then slide the pizza off with a shake. The pizza sits right on the floor of the oven where it's super hot, over 300 degrees to be precise. 
Luckily, you don't have to wait long for this yummy pizza to be ready, as it only takes a minute. Wow, that looks delicious. Everyone's joining in with the pizza making. Great job, guys. Everyone's doing such an amazing job of making and eating pizzas. It's making me hungry. Hey, Gecko, we made a special pizza just for you. Oh, thank you very much. This pizza is absolutely delicious. I'm really full now, but what an amazing day we've had. Thanks very much to Ben for showing us around his wood-fired pizza engine. And thanks to all you helpers. I'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm here at the Gresford Miniature Railway to meet some mini steam trains. These trains are exactly the same as real steam engines, except much, much smaller. But that means they're really fun to ride on. The Mechanicals didn't want to come with me today. They said they only want to see big vehicles. Those silly Mechanicals don't know what they're missing out on. This is David and he's a model engineer and mini train driver. This is his locomotive and it's called the Royal Air Force. It took David 12 years to build this special locomotive and today we're going to send it whizzing around the track. This part is called the tender and it's where coal and extra water can be stored. Now that David's train is safely on the track, it's time to transfer it onto a steaming bay. This is where the fire inside the locomotive can be lit and the boiler gets filled up with water. This process is called steaming up. First, David uses this pump to fill the boiler with lots of water. The boiler is inside this part here. More water can then be poured into the tender to keep the boiler topped up when the train is running. OK, gents, tea's ready. Hey, hey. And here's one for you, Gecko. Oh, thank you very much, Paul. Next, it's time to fill the firebox with coal. David has soaked these bits of coal in a liquid that makes them burn much faster. The fire is then lit from underneath the firebox. David builds the fire by shoveling more mini pieces of coal into the firebox. As the fire heats the water in the boiler, the pressure builds up and has to escape somewhere. And... Woo! There it goes! A quick oil around the parts and cylinders to keep everything moving smoothly and we're ready to go! David's friend Paul swings the track over and it's full steam ahead! Coal is the fuel for this steam train and David needs plenty to power the train around the track. A quick stop at the coal store to load up the tender to make sure we have enough coal for the day.
to let David's train onto the main track. Brian here needs to change the points. He checks no other trains are coming, pulls these levers, and the track magically moves all by itself. Green means go! Woo! Now David can whiz around the track. The mechanicals are missing this. It looks so much fun. So, David, how do you drive a mini train? Well, first of all, you need coal for the fire. You put the coal into the firebox, and uh, that makes the fire. And the fire boils the water in the boiler, and the steam from the the boiled water is then taken off down to the cylinders, which drives the engine and this lever is called the regulator and we just turn that and then the engine will start going forwards. Hey mechanicals have you been here all along? Do you want to have a ride? David, the mechanicals are so excited that they're letting off their own steam. Come on, mechanicals, jump aboard. Mechanicals love these mini trains almost as much as these children. Well, Mechanicals, did you have fun after all? Thanks so much to David and all the model engineers at Gresford Miniature Railway for teaching us all about these amazing trains. We'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone, Gecko here. Have you ever seen one of these before? It's a concrete mixer. These amazing construction trucks are used all over the world to help build roads, houses and even schools. But how do they work? And why does this big drum have to spin around? Come on, let's find out! These big trucks are perfect for carrying and delivering a material called concrete. There's some wet concrete on the floor there. Watch out, Blue Mechanical! But what is concrete? Concrete is a mix of sand, water and cement. Cement's a bit like glue. Something amazing happens when you mix these three things together. They become concrete. And when it's dry, it's as hard as rock. Uh, Blue, were you paying attention to what I was just saying? Concrete is rock solid when it sets. Oh dear, Blue. It looks like you're stuck fast. This is why concrete mixers are the only trucks that can carry concrete. To stop it from setting and turning rock hard, you have to keep mixing it. This is the drum and it's where the concrete is stored. Connected to the drum is a gearbox and motor which spins it this way and that way. 
rollers on the other end of the drum keep everything turning nice and smoothly. This part here is called the hopper, and it's where the concrete gets poured into the drum. There's Danny. He's the driver of this truck. He's off to pick up a fresh batch from the concrete plant. He reverses carefully into the loading bay. To load up, Danny has to perfectly line up the hopper with the loading chute. Up in the plant's control room, they can create just the right mix for Danny's batch. Then it's time to load up. Whilst he's waiting, Danny tops up the onboard water tank. It's very important to have plenty of water on board, because clever computers inside the mixer test the concrete. They can add more water if it starts to get a bit too dry. It's a bit like porridge. Too dry or too wet, and it's no good. Just like Goldilocks, we want it just right. We're fully loaded, so let's go! Mechanicals! That's a very dangerous place to stand. You should never stand that close to a big truck like this. And even with all his mirrors and cameras, Danny can't see you there if he's turning. It's much safer to stand further away from the mixer. The drum is turning and we're heading to Danny's customer to drop this load off. At this huge factory, they make massive buildings out of concrete. So they need lots and lots of concrete mixers visiting all the time. Inside the drum, there's blades that mix the concrete as it turns. To empty the load, Danny makes the drum spin the opposite way, which pushes the concrete mix out. The concrete is emptied into this big container which can be moved around the factory with huge cranes. They're using this mix to build a wall. The concrete is poured into this ready-made mould, which is just the right size for the wall. Just a few days later, and the concrete has properly set. Now it looks a lot more like a wall. The walls are then loaded onto this big lorry, ready to be delivered to the construction site and turned into a building. The last part of the process is for Danny to wash out the hopper, ready for the next batch. Thanks very much to Danny and all the team at Tarmac for teaching us all about these amazing concrete mixers. And thank you for watching. For now, it's Cheerio from Gecko. Bye! Hello everyone! Whoa, look at that! That isn't just any bus. That's a double-decker bus. Look, there's a downstairs and an upstairs. I'm just waiting at a bus stop for the next bus to arrive. All you have to do to catch a bus is put your hand out like this and the bus will stop. This is Brian and he's the driver of this bus. He sits in a place called the cab. Here it comes now. 
Brian presses the red button and the doors fold open. This bus is special because it can move up and down to let people get on more easily. Red Mechanical, where have you been on this bus? You've been playing in the junkyard? Oh well, I hope you had fun. Come on, let's get on board. You can fit up to 75 people on this double-decker bus. I think I'm going to sit upstairs to see the lovely views. Woohoo! I can see everything up here! The wheels on the bus go round and round Round and round, round and round The wheels on the bus go round and round All day long Here we are back at the bus depot I'll just press the bell to ask the driver to stop Shall we have a closer look at the controls here in the cab? The driver can press all sorts of buttons to make things happen This button controls the sign on the front of the bus Which tells people where the bus is going to This is the ticket machine And these screens are connected to cameras So the driver can see the passengers upstairs These buses travel all over the city So they sometimes get very dirty Shall we put this double-decker bus through the special bus wash to give it a clean? It's time to use the water and brushes to clean our double-decker buses Through this truck wash, our bus will crawl Have you ever seen a bus so tall? Look at that! Clean as a whistle Where do you think the engine is in this double-decker bus? Surprise! It's here, right at the back And these buses are special because they run on electricity and diesel When the bus is going slowly and picking up people from bus stops the bus uses an electric motor This makes it much quieter than other buses Just be careful not to fall asleep on your way home But even these buses need to be repaired sometimes Instead of bringing them to Gecko's garage They're brought here! To the Arriva maintenance garage Where expert mechanics can repair them Look how many buses are being worked on at the same time This bus is having a wheel changed And here's another bus driving into the garage It drives in and parks over a big hole in the floor called the pit If there's something wrong underneath the bus a mechanic can go down into the pit and fix anything while standing underneath Or they can use a giant hydraulic lift to lift it up and make it even taller When everything's fixed on the bus it's time to leave the garage and go back out onto the road to take more passengers where they need to go I've loved learning all about double-decker buses today We'll see you again soon Bye!